is the first game in the recent over the board tournament uh, in the major section the first time of ever in the major section it's the under 1950 and we play as black looking at the critical points in the game that we can take home um, bits of information from so let's take a look and dive in we're going straight to the critical points there might be critical points in these bits here but we're just going to our own personal evaluation at the start but well, for me felt like the danger zone came around about it was already feeling a little bit iffy here but i'm feeling it's man i'm managing but they look like they're trying to strangulate our king king area so we at this point here i thought oh i think we're actually not doing too bad we're putting pressure on them trying to choke us uh, our king feels safe so nothing really too much to worry about now we need to just try and fashion a way of fervently defending or getting some counterplay so they jump the knight in and um, that was always expected we take their bishop off the board and we bring the queen through attacking the pawn that's unprotected at the minute so feeling fairly chilled and relaxed about it at this moment just bringing the rook now supporting the knight and then they bring the knight down and at this point i was thinking hmm, there might be a bit of a problem here and we decided to take the knight off the board and thought the problem was this this was where the overthinking came in i think because all i could picture was this pawn is only protected by our bishop so if they get their knight here and they get their bishop here get this knight out of the way somewhere wherever it can go then it's going to get a two on one on this pawn and i don't have anything that can come and protect it so immediately i'm just thinking well not immediately after sitting there thinking what well, that they're going to get that pawn and they're going to be around my king area so i had the panic on the mental panic to say well okay let's just take it off the board i did not think that was going to improve my position at all at this point i'm thinking it's the only thing i can do isn't it surely to stop this from actually happening now this is one of those cases where when i've looked back on the evaluation uh, by myself not using any computer um, I'm, I'm getting into that habit of not using the computer for a bit just keep looking at it individually to see it was there any further developments i could have done and i just i don't think i needed to panic so much because these moves are going to take quite a while and maybe we can do some defense work because the knight is attacking the bishop as well so i could just bring the bishop the rook across and defend so then if they do do this i mean i'm not saying they were planning to do that they might have done any other movements that i wasn't aware of um because they were a very strong player they were taking a time pacing it and yep yeah, so let's go through the movements that i was fearful of which was the knight coming here obviously looking to do that getting the bishop here and getting this on here so we'll focus on them attempting to do that and so from that point then our queen is out in the it's out on the side it's not really doing any more more attacking they could look to exchange they could move the knight looking to get the bishop thing here so it's our move at the minute so we could just we can't move this knight just yet to try and get doubled up because this pawn is being attacked could bring the queen here to defend the pawn and then the knight can move to get the rooks try and get these rooks on this um, open file if we can so i would plump for something like this bringing the queen here based on my lengthy analysis after it so i bring the queen back here attacking the the pawn well def defending the pawn rather 
so the knight can move and potentially get the rooks doubled here. Still obviously thinking of this here, but trying to get a better position. So if we do go there, if they then go here, it's blocking this, but they can still go for it. So is there anything else? Maybe their bishop, white square bishop moves because it wants to do the thing that we talked about. So shall we position it in the position that we're scared of, which is them x-raying through and getting a two on one on the pawn. So we can give them something to think about, but it's nothing major, but the knight is blocking at the minute. And this is where I was, um, as I was going through, I'm thinking, yeah, it was, a, it was too, it was too slow for them to get the two on one on because we're giving them something to think about, but it's nothing major. So then the idea is to bring this knight around here to attack the rook. But then after a long thinking thing, I'm thinking, you know, they don't have to exchange and this person's a little bit clever and they probably hang the rook in here looking to get the pawns split in the centre. So we're going to plump with for that one. So we want to get the knight out. And it's got a nice position attacking the queen here, which is pretty straightforward. We're going to bring the knight out, looking for this position, but they're not stupid. They're probably just going to bring the pawn here. This was obviously after a long, long, long think, you know, so I'm, I'm rattling through the moves now because I did spend quite a bit of time. And already it feels better but still concerned about this here we're giving them things to think about what do they want to do next and they feel like even doing this is it really going to benefit me from not losing this pawn you know sometimes it's like oh well you know you're going to get checkmated but you just try a last ditch attempt at blocking it off but it's it's inevitable I'm just thinking, is this an inevitable type of situation? We should have got x-ray through to the queen, through to the king, but the pawn is there and the knight is defending. So nothing major there unless they make a big hiccup. So it's our turn. Knight could come here to attack the rook. Could mean moving the bishop out of the way. So I'll just bring the bishop back. Obviously, the rook's coming to double up, I believe. If we do do this. Hmm. This is where I owned an eye, didn't it? You think they take the pawn? The opportunity is there for them to take the pawn. Shall we go through that one first and see? Don't think they would take the pawn, though, with the rook. Queen can take, but the knight's defending. Take with the check, like we said. Doesn't want his queen getting checked on, or maybe he does. Nah, I think they'll just take with the bishop. And the rook coming to attack doesn't make much difference. Hit the rook with the pawn. It's got no place in the center. And that probably would see the rook off, wouldn't it? There would be this. There would be this. Then it's got no space, so it'll get to... Oh, it's got a space here. It's got a space here, so it drops. It's not a very comfy position, but it drops. And it's attacking the pawn as well. Ouch. Nothing else doing. Um, knight could come here attacking rook rook. That might get a bit messy because the queen is going to be angling here. And then they're definitely going to be all over. So bring the knight here protecting. Rook goes right. That's it. We've had enough. Bishop takes. Now this is where the thunder is going to start happening now. It's got the two on one. It looks like it was inevitable. It's unlucky that this knight is supported by this pawn. Because this knight is going to be moving somewhere. Isn't it? 
it's not going to go there go there maybe it goes backwards it's not really wanting to go backwards but that's the only space it's really going so now they've got the two on one and the queen could come here to defend very briefly so what's the tail of the tape they're plus one out of that they're plus one but we're not getting squished that definitely would have been a lot better that type of continuation yeah happy with that so it's a case of not panicking so much i, I, I just overthought that situation but interesting game all the same uh, so we took and at that point really i'm thinking the position is not looking good and all i'm trying to do is trying to clear the space so that i can try and get my pieces in front of my king because he's just swarming down but i think again massive overthinking of the whole position just from that bishop move um don't really stand much of a chance at that point so we pushed up onto the pawn capture oops excuse me let's go there brings their queen in And at this point, it's just a basic sort of suffocation of the position. And it's going to be checkmate in one or one or something. Yeah, so if I go here, rook comes down. And yeah, it's all done. So nothing to do. But big learning curve on that. The critical thinking side of things is not to overthink the potential of the opponent. Give them a, a little bit too much respect in this game. And yeah. We move on to the next one. Game two analysis, playing as white. So we'll push through the center, grab, grab, grab. So that's all pretty straightforward. We're looking at the critical moments in these games, uh, just to take home any lessons that need to be learned. So in this particular game here, um, we got a draw. But as with many drawn games, there's many opportunities that you could potentially push to gain some further advantage. So we captured, captured. So that felt fairly straightforward. Again, this is my own personal evaluation and analysis of the moves so far. We'll look at the computer stuff later. Maybe, maybe I didn't do that in the first one, did I? Um, <laughs> but that's done, that don't matter. If I'm feeling happy with it, you know, um, it, I shouldn't have to use the computer. You know, I'm trying to wee myself off of the evaluation with the computer. If I can make myself content with how I've assessed it, then I think that's a better way of doing it because I don't play like a computer. If there was anything majorly, majorly wrong with the, the first game after my own personal evaluation, then I would have jumped in straight off, but I must have felt fairly, fairly comfortable with what we'd found out. Okay, so push the pawn up, just thinking this looks like it could be a draw. Just push the pawn now, just stopping the knight from um, attacking. So I'm thinking this was a little bit nice and chilled this game in terms of pressure i'm feeling that there's not a lot of heat coming my way which is good and i'm not giving them any heat either but as soon as i saw these pawns being pushed down here i thought oh that's good they're not working the pieces together with the rooks and stuff so that's a blessing at the minute so it does give me a bit of tempo to organize my own attack towards their king side so it's the classical situation of, okay, if they attack, if you castle on the queen side and they castle on the king side, then you start pushing your pawns down, you know, whichever side the, their king is on. So I'm like thinking, okay, they're pushing onto our king side. I'll keep pushing onto theirs. So they move the knight out of the way and we develop our knight looking to do a bit of a 
preemptive maneuver because this pawn is going to be attacking at some point i'm looking for a juicy position here just to put a bit of pressure on the queen and maybe hold this position and if they forget themselves and we take the rook is on the queen basic stuff so we bring the knight up attacking the queen queen comes down and we're just making sure we can manage because currently they were attacking the pawn so we support and they make space we can now attack the queen queen comes across at this point here i did move a little bit too quick um, because in my quick calculation it was okay yeah gonna hit him here he's gonna if he goes here then we hit him here no problems whatsoever but didn't look at this so the best maneuver really should have been simple king coming across just blocking it off nice and steadily and if they make another movement i don't know maybe moving the rook here attacking the rook and then we can attack the queen with the small pawn here so a little tiny things like that moved a little bit too quick look at where the queen's going then look at the passageway so let's just bring it back so we preempted basically and when here the queen comes down at that point i thought oh no i'm gonna get checkmated because his rook's gonna come here and that type of stuff i think they probably had an advantage here we moved the king um what i did expect was one of the rooks to be putting a check on the king maybe and if we're having to move maybe the king's ch queen's chasing it a bit but we do have dancing space across here so they brought their queen across which i was surprised because i thought they would have been chomping to take the pawn off the board so at this point i'm thinking did they miss a tempo by not capturing but i suppose if they did capture the rook could come and chase it around a bit rook comes here then he goes here rook comes here what's on this diagonal he can just about escape to here so he's getting chased around a bit but he would have won a pawn so we moved the king with the idea of okay if we come here again then he won't be able to come into the corner but i thought maybe they were going to go for a draw and before these maneuvers were taking place i did actually offer a draw in fact i offered a draw before the queen move came here and but they wanted to continue playing on so they brought the rook across this time probably looking to go for the mate look looking thing yeah so if i forget myself and leave the king here then that would be some sort of mate because nothing can actually come in front of yeah so we move the king across just blocking the queen from attacking and then we start attacking the queen so that was one of the key areas there just basically taking a look at the position um fully yeah and looking at the weak areas it didn't cause us any, any devastation in the game it could have so it's looking at those preventative measures so now just simplifying and just taking and taking and i don't think i saw any other the mat oh yes there might have been there might have been all right so the queen is down currently there we're equal on the pawns etc the knight looks jammed in a little bit and we do have pawn majority on this side they've got pawn majority on that side just that it's doubled pawns but i'm thinking that we should be able to manage a draw or even manage some confusion towards getting a win well looking to trade off because i'm in the draw mindset i'm thinking well okay it could go either way they are higher rated don't want to take those chances and we move the king up and now we're thinking well okay if he's playing on but we've got weak pawns here that we can start taking things off if we're being forced to push the game and they're just carrying on um 
once I think I offered a draw twice was it or something and it was ignored well, not ignored but so I thought that's it I'm not asking anymore and um, they're obviously wanting to play to play it out as a draw or to see if they can win so we brought the bishop back just to keep it safe still protecting this pawn here the knight's doing a dance always worried when people are moving with the knights because get all over the place so we're up a pawn at this moment in time but we're up a pawn but it's a double pawn situation we've got anyway um it could work we've got three pawns against one pawn here and now their queen is just looking to attack this pawn with a two on one with the knight so we've got with a check on the king still protecting the pawn with the queen and now we're looking to see if we can get another pawn off but realistically we'll probably lose this pawn if we went and grabbed this pawn so was there any sort of way of trying to inch these pawns up or you know i'll just push this pawn up just to get it out of the way and start pushing this that's kind of thinking what's going on so i didn't feel too badly about it thinking well you know if he keeps on playing he, he might lose um that's what i was thinking in the back of my head i'm hoping well okay but i'll try not to do anything silly so we go and attack the queen because we know the queen's not going to be taking the pawn queen moves back and we're just really wanting to go for the draw but something inside me is thinking push here or go for the queen we're looking to trade off because it could get messy still have sights of potentially if the queen does take then at least the bishop is protecting the pawn and then we would be able to get up here and potentially get a win but it's not trading off the queen is like just dancing around so if i had more confidence i probably would be maybe pushing the pawns up or something well going for the queen exchange because in the back of my head i have sights of this sort of thing working with the king but wasn't too confident with the queens being on and at that point the opponent offered a draw and then in my head i'm thinking you know i think there's a win here but i should should i accept it i'm like going oh just accept it it's gonna i'll end up blundering something somewhere okay so carrying on from this position yeah because i'm thinking because what he basically said was he's just going to go up and down with the queen this is what i'll probably look at now in the evaluation on the computer there's nothing much in it it's actually saying queen takes d3 there's nothing much in it so if he did take then we take king g8 um king c yep so supporting just going up and up and just pushing king f8 yeah this is one of them where it's it could have oh, it's shame bit what's that no oh, i'm going to see what's with the bishop stuff uh push king e7 this king's going to be fast enough isn't it b4 yeah type stuff king d7 push again and um, saying bishop b2 because the pawn's not protected no i ain't seeing that i'm focused on this aren't i so we're going to push the pawn and they take king obviously takes still looks very drawish i know it's not point two so i think it was a good call personally it's not showing much of a muchness yeah i'm i'm happy and comfortable that that was a draw nice one it is uh, game three well it's not really game three because um round three was a buy for myself but it's the actual physical game three 
in terms of games. So we'll play as black and just take a look at this, see if there's any critical points. There is obviously, but we'll see if we can. Oh, let's take this off. We don't want that on. And there, we're doing our own evaluation. So yeah, so we sat there for a bit, we looked at this position and we thought, oh, it might be an ample opportunity to practice this maneuver. And push through onto the bishop. So it's at this point of thinking, all right, I'm not really as comfortable in this position as my normal openings, but because we're trying it, we're just feeling that way giving the opponent something to think about playing as black you know we kind of feel like we're winning a bit of tempo so we captured the pawn and it all looked pretty simple straightforward just developed the bishop and the bishop's now uh, um, supporting the pawn which usually we don't end up in that time scale of being able to support the pawn because it's like a gambit situation just let it go and we should really be looking at getting castled. So for me, I think really just castling may have been better rather than bringing the bishop out and x ray through to the queen. Because I don't like to have my king airy. My usual practice is to castle. You know, so I don't think there would have been anything wrong with castling. Was thinking they're going to be taking, just doubling the pawns. But there's nothing we could do about that really. So I feel that just castling may have done us better. We're thinking, yes, well, the knight is going to move, so then the rook is going to be doubling onto the pawn. So it was a little bit too, for me, it's a little bit overthinking the situation again, probably giving the opponent too much respect in terms of, oh, they're going to compound their attack and build up and all that sort of stuff. So bringing the bishop through, x-raying through to the knight, so it's kind of stopping the knight from moving so that the rook can't put pressure onto the pawn with the two pieces. And that's a little bit too much for, at this moment in time. The queen moves off of the uh, position and we shouldn't have done this knight move. You know, it's like, oh, let's go and hit the queen. We can just go and castle. Yeah, but if we've gone castle now, because we haven't castled earlier, the bishop's just going to take the pawn. So once that was done, I sat there in my head, I'm thinking, why did you do that? Why did you do the bishop move? We didn't need to do that. Because now we're not going to get castled. So we go and attack the queen, trying to give them something to think about. As I put it here, I thought, oh my gosh, he can just come here with the queen. Bishop's protecting the knight, but the queen, king, queen has got a check on the king. It's hitting the pawn. So not a very good position. Queen comes down and thinking, oh, Thank you, that at least is not gone there. So we push the pawn up just to stop the, any potential attacks on this pawn. And also the bishop are taking the pawn here, putting pressure onto the rook. And then they hit the knight. We bring the bishop back now, attacking the queen. Still not castled at this moment. Queen moves out of the way. And we bring the knight back because it's under attack. Bishop takes, pawn takes, knight jumps in. We take and takes, then we castle. But it feels like we're a little bit late to the party. It's not bad, bad, but positionally we could feel a lot better. So it's equal at the moment. So now we're looking to see if we can x-ray through to the queen. Queen moves to the other side, it's now targeting this pawn. Doesn't have any major support, but um, they do have the half open file with the rook. 
And this, as I did this move, I, I should not have done it. I was like greedy munching, but I thought, oh, okay, if we go here, we go here. But then as I did place the queen down, I thought, well, his bishop's just going to come here and block. Then there's going to be all this pressure on our queen. If we pushed up, then the queen comes in, on our king, sorry, queen comes here and puts a check on. So from this moment, I'm on the back foot. So this queen move, I don't think needed to be undone. So there are elements of pushing here, but they could still squeeze the queen in here with the element of this. So that's all I had in my head once the queen was here. So I should not have done that move. Could have preempted that by bringing the pawn here. So then it stops the bishop from coming here. So smallest of moves. But then what was I thinking? My queen is blocked out of the game. They're going to look to charge down with their rook. Try and hit this pawn. If we did push, then his bishop's going to sacrifice itself. Was it fast enough? So little things like that. I think this pawn move, I think probably may have been better as a starter, at least. Maybe to give the queen some hope of maybe coming here. So if we did do that, I'm not sure what they would do, but they did do this move at some point with the rook, you know, coming to here. But the bishop is guarding that area at the moment. Also, the bishop can attack the queen with this potential movement. So what else can they do in this situation? Bringing the rook here is not going to be beneficial apart from here. So if they bring the rook here, looking to come here, we have time to bring the bishop and attack the queen. As far as I can see, queen's not going to drop. So potentially comes here or comes here to get this position. So I think they'll probably jump here to get that position of that. And then we can squeeze the king across. But then he brings the rook across. He's got two. If we then push maybe onto the bishop, the bishop probably takes, takes, takes. That's going to cause us trouble. So just bringing the pawn up. Maybe then the bishop comes here. Or they bring the other rook into the game somehow, but that feels like it would have been a lot better. That tiny continuation. I don't know how it looks on the evaluation side of things, so I'm going to take a look on the evaluation. Let's just go back, 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 back. And then put the computer on and see how that pans out. So pushing the pawn up, like we said, and then we said the rook was coming here looking for that plan. Yeah. And then we said the bishop potentially attacking the queen. And then the queen moving here. Going for the cheapy. And what did we say? Pushing the pawn. Moving the king out of the way, sorry. Okay. And then they bring their rook across. And we push up. It's giving them 0 0.1. It's drawish, drawish. Okay. Right, that's better than what happened. Excellent. Smallest of details. Over totally overthinking the situation and going fancy and arty with the queen move. So, yep, big lessons learned there quite nicely. Didn't need to go uh, flowery at all. The queen was guarding the square quite nicely as well. So it was um, nothing to worry about really at all. And I just over, over fought. I gave the opponent too much respect in terms of the position on the board and 
I tried to get a distraction thing going, but I gave them the strength, which, you know, I knew was coming, but I gave, I just gave them the strength and just, I had no defense from that point on, no proper defense anyway. So I bring the queen back down and it's way too late now to get any of this pawn stuff going on here. So I thought anyway, um, so we brought it back. I'm going to keep the evaluation on now because really at this um, point, um, I don't think I played it well. I thought to myself, I'm going to play this F6 thing, but I'm going, I feel like I'm losing out because it's just going to open up space around the king. Computer is actually saying F6 though, isn't it? Oh, is that my, it's not my move, is it? No, I moved my king out of the way. Yeah, which was a big mistake. Should have gone for the attack. But for some strange reason, I'm thinking it's just going to go for just have a taking, taking with the rook. And I'm thinking that that's a good thing because it's just opening up space in front of my king. Although his queen can't come here. Interesting. Yeah, fuzzy, fuzzy tunnel vision. Yeah. Is it going to take here with the bishop? Again, it's not showing a good thing, but I'm thinking they're making space. Takes, takes, queen, not... Oh, I tell you. <laughs> it's shocking when you're over the board, you just see all these ghosts. Yeah. F6 was the key one that I was thinking of doing, but I just said, no, there's too much going on. They're going to be doing crazy sacrifices and putting pressure on my king. I'm not going to do it. He wants to open up space in front of my... my but his queen can't even get in. And I did spend time over the move as well. Ah. Oh, well. Fantastic. <laughs> okay, so they didn't do that because we weren't in this position. So they brought the rook across and down brought the king across here and at this point I'm thinking there's nothing much to do uh, there's some, been some error made somewhere and it all was all to do with that f6 pawn really in the end of it all because really this wasn't it wasn't a bad position in any way shape and um, they had to work and even going there they still had to work so not going to beat myself up too much about going for the group pawn grabbing it's just that we could have done something just a little bit earlier not that but that just to prevent but the ghosts came in and that was it really, the end of the game. The uh, end of the game just ended with smother me smothering my own king really and just allowing the opponent to take advantage of the um, bad position that I'd created for myself. So yeah, that's an easy lessons learned. Um, yeah, <laughs> we'll go on to the next one. This is the last game. Just going through, let's take this off. Dun, 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 dun. On here, right, let's go. So playing as white and just doing simple attacks. And in this one, I'm thinking, well, I want to try and push for any type of advantage or win or a draw because I was only on half a point at the minute which you know a draw in terms of the actual games um i'd got a buy as well that gave me one point but i was focused just on the games played so i was only on one draw at the minute so to reach the target i needed to get a draw or to overperform to get a win so looking to try and keep a solid basics as best possible and from this point of the knight moving here, I'm thinking we might be able to do something, but we don't want to overpress. So I went for the basic, I went for the 
basic cheap tactic here of giving them something to think about the bishop and the queen attacking the weak, weak pawn and then castled so feeling good about the castling situation but now looking to see where am i actually going so again just x-raying through to a higher piece looking to bait a pawn maybe or something trying to see if i can squish the king area somehow got my eyes on this um rook here but the knight does have the pawn i was thinking oh I'll just push this pawn up and maybe they won't see it but the knight is guarding the rook queen comes off the line off of the x-ray gives us time to develop our knight they attack the bishop bring the bishop back and the attack so we're now x-raying through to the queen all pretty straightforward stuff felt felt nice and simple felt nicely coordinated so now x-raying through to their queen not trying to do anything too extravagant the bishop comes through it's got the knight it's got no protection so just bringing the rook to support and now they're starting to open up um, but i'm thinking well we can take this off the board just maneuver the knight and um, just playing from the back not don't have any issues just need to see what the opponent wants to do they're obviously wanting to get castled and we're trying to fashion some ways of defending our area rather than over pressing so we bring the queen across looking for the exchange and they don't go for the exchange but i want to get the queen off the board uh, in my head i'm thinking rook in the center of the board it's not doesn't have any place there we have to see how the game transpires the bishop at the minute is not really getting into action but i was very focused at this pawn it's probably going to be under threat because this knight is protecting here our bishop's not got much play in the game it's just biting on granite at the moment so we hit the bishop and look and see what it wants to do it does capture so we hit it again and now they they do have this type of situation but i'm thinking the king can move here quite nicely and we're looking maybe to either get rid of uh, their rook somehow getting the knight moved across and can we get up here can we lock it in somewhere so we move the knight looking for the exchange but also looking for a position here to give a bit of pressure onto the rook it maybe get here and attack the bishop so they double and we're just taking it off the board keep trying to keep it as simple as possible they capture put a bit of pressure with the rook and they bring the bishop through as expected at some point with the bishop rook drops down so trying to just get pieces off the board if we can knowing full well the rook <clears throat> bishop is coming here and just bringing the rook across now looking to go for their rook at some point uh, our rook doesn't have any protection on now the bishop is attacking the pawn which doesn't have a defense so we bring our knight out of the way just to protect the pawn and this did stun me because i'm thinking ouch this gives them plus one we can't take because our rook doesn't have any have any defense on but we can bring the king here and just because they're plus one doesn't mean they've actually won the game in our in our eyes stayed calm they captured captured so they're looking to trade down they have poor majority on this side but we have poor majority on this side and we have a lot of activity on this side that looks like we can take advantage of it's just that this pawn is going as well so how do we work this we're going to be two pawns down and the bishop takes so we move the rook out of the way just uh, protecting this pawn because we're thinking they're going to come here and double up so we're probably giving up another pawn because if the bishop takes takes you know obviously not giving that pawn up sorry so the knight jumps in so at this point here they're plus two pawns and i'm thinking i'm not sure if the knight needed to jump in here because would you as black if i was black and i've got this beautiful position that they've got would you not just start pushing your pawns down because you've got a massive pawn majority on this side two pawns 
getting them a little bit further down the board. So I'm glad they didn't. So it gives us the opportunity to attack their bishop. So as I did that, because they didn't move very quickly after that, I'm thinking, all right, kind let's see, maybe he's going here. Their time was very low. So at this point, I think they were underneath, getting to under five minutes or something like that. It's a 10 second increment type thing. So they were moving a little bit quickly, which was, I think, a blessing because pushing these pawns potentially might have, you know, that would have just crushed us. So the rook comes down, attacks the king. So I think they're looking for a checkmate position because this knight is covering this square. So I had visions of them coming round here and looking to try and squish us. But I'm thinking the tempo might work for us because if they do go for that, which I think they are going for, rather than pushing these pawns, and because their time is running out, I believe they were thinking, we don't have time to push these pawns. And they go for it. So I'm thinking, well, the piece is protecting this square here. We have seen this, it's beautiful. If we hadn't seen this type of um, position before, we would have got, it's not really a checkmate, but we would have lost the rook. Yeah, because we wouldn't have been able to come back here to actually defend. We would have had to go here and then his rook would have taken. So we took the knight off the board and the opponent did not look very happy at all with themselves after that. Um, I'd already offered a draw uh, earlier in the game and they said, you know, let's continue on. And this was now looking like it was potentially just going to be a draw. Even though we've got a minor piece up, I was, you know, I was thinking, well, you know, they might have some skills, whatever it is, and they're going to get our rook off. They're going to get the bishop off and we're going to get their bishop off. But they do have two extra pawns. So I, I think it, it's probably going to be a draw. So they take the bishop off the board uh, reluctantly. Their time is running out, so they're having to move a bit quick. So we take the bishop and we take the rook off the board. And they start putting pressure onto our knight. At this point, my, um, what's the word, notations were getting a little bit jumbled up because I was moving... I'm moving it quick just to keep pressure on his time. <laughs> and I did think, well, you know, if I had quite a lot of time left and maybe there was a win here because I've got the knight, you know, maybe there's a win. But do I feel confident enough in being able to jost jostle the win rather than just going for a draw? Anyway, just carried on. They started pushing the pawns down. There's a lot of pawns to contend with here, with uh, just the knight. We've got a pawn majority on this side. If we can lessen here and maybe try and push these pawns up. Don't know if that's the right technique or not, but I was happy with going for a draw. But this looked potentially like they could still win with the pawns. So they've got more pieces to promote, haven't they? So we pushed up. And at this point, it ended as being a draw.